always start out that way. Like always, I'm checking to make sure we're live on Shadow Hunters Paranormal Investigations and Page. Yes, we are. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Scotty Talks About tonight. And tonight, I got a real fun show with me because I got I got two of my best friends, or all three of my best friends, and and my wife Carrie's with me. So, hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome to the show this week. And uh, I got oh, and I got a broadcast. It ain't uh, so much to do, so much to do, so little time to do it. So I get everybody in the chat room so we can see who's all in there tonight. Oh, Nida's in the chat room. Hi, Nida. Welcome to the show. And everybody, welcome to um, Scotty Talks About. Like I said, tonight, we're going to be talking psychic tonight. Um, Terry's the founder of the group. This is Terry Rorick. Mm -hmm. We got, to me, this way, Devin is here. And Devin, hi. Oh, Devin Evans and Jen Hudson is here with us. So hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. hi everyone. So excited to have you. So we're going to start around the room and have everybody kind of explain who you are and um and unfortunately terry um has the worst thing in the world being married to me a bit crab ample that i am and and <laughs> so she puts up with a lot of crap and i just wanted to say that publicly tonight there you go so everybody knows she puts up with a lot of my crap get very frustrated so here i am and here you are so terry why don't you introduce yourself and then we'll go around the room doing the introductions and then we'll start talking about psychic tonight and all things spiritual tonight okay with us. My name is Terry Rorick, and I am the founder of Psychic Tonight. And now, what kind of things do you want me to say? Just Nothing yet. Who you oh, are? Oh, okay. You're... I'm Terry Rorick. I'm married to Scotty. And um, that's and... okay. You don't have to send me sympathy cards. So, yeah, she, she would like that. She would like that. <laughs> she could have a whole wall behind me of the sympathy cards. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's me. So you have abilities. You know. Oh, is that what you're, okay. Yeah, we're not talking second night, we're talking you. So oh, okay. You and what uh, you do all right, all so right. So people know more about you. Okay, what do I do? Um, let's see. When I first started Psychic Tonight, I told people I was, I was like Charlie Brown. I got like, you know, at Chris or at Halloween and everybody else got, oh, I got this, I got this, I got this. And Charlie Brown's like, I got a rock. <laughs> you know, and I felt like, oh, I've got nothing. I don't really have anything. It's just so cool to have all these gifts. And a number of people said to me when we were um, starting out Psychics Tonight, they're like, well, that doesn't make any sense. How does somebody who doesn't have psychic abilities run a psychic group? And I said, well, that's my, um, that's my specialty because I don't have any conflict of interest here. So anyway, um, but I have taken ayahuasca and during that experience, I started uh, speaking in tongues, which I, is like a form of channeling. Uh, I didn't really believe in that because I was raised in a very conservative Christian church that although it was Christian, it was like, oh, we don't do that. That's for the Pentecostals or you know something like that. But anyway, so I started doing that with um, ayahuasca and so I continued to do that. Um, very interesting, very centering. Um, and then also I have clear cognition. And that is that I just have certain insights about situations. That's my thing. Yep, she knows mm -hmm. I'm a dork. <laughs> <laughs> Not, no, I wouldn't say that I, that's, I didn't use clear cognition to know that. I just learned that <laughs> through experience. <laughs> very so, because yeah. if it was clear cognition, I would have kept you in the You're, friend zone. You would have ran away. <laughs> <laughs> he was in the friend zone for a while, but he was really persistent, so he wore me down. I asked her like 16 <laughs> times. Oh my gosh. Anyway. I knew it from the day I knew it from the day we met though, because Spirit told because me he had clear cognition. Yeah, because I did, and I knew Spirit told me that, that I met my wife and and so then I met my wife. So I was already there. I was already done. So I had to ask her like 16 times. And yeah. it was only like five months. And she said, yes, yeah, so we're all good. So. Oh, that's good. I'm just a persist, uh, persistent salesman. That's right. Because the first time I asked her, I didn't get a no. I got a maybe. Yeah, so that's a like, yes. He asked me a month after we met. And I was 19. No, no. That's you know, you didn't say no. You, you said, ask me. Ask after me in five years. years. I wanted to finish college. So I asked her in five days. Yep. So I just sped up the time. Because you know, there is no, no such thing as time. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say. Time, was a time is just an illusion. Yeah. So five years means five days to me. So there you go. It's all happening now. 
Devin Evans. Hey, uh, hi everyone. I'm Devin. I am the leader of the Columbus, Ohio Psychics Unite chapter. Um, I am a former student of Scotty's, and I, um, with that, am a psychic medium. I have Claire Cognition, also Claire Audience. Um, <clears throat> I, I read tarot, um, but these days I'm mostly focused on um, my mediumship abilities. So um, with that, yeah, our first Columbus, Ohio meeting is going to be next Wednesday. And um, we'll have links in the in the comments for anyone who's interested to learn more about that too. What I think is funny is every time we, I always hear a clear audience, I was like, okay, so we know how many people are going to be in the audience today. <laughs> we do. but we do though okay so at the psychic tonight meetings in madison oh yeah we yes. should say this yeah yes. i do so, this all the time okay so we're getting ready to go and we have this um unity of madison is the church that we have it in they they let us have, use their basement so we have all these chairs and tables down there we move aside the tables and set the chairs up in a big circle and then we'll set up a certain amount of chairs and it's pretty yeah. accurate yeah like, but we always put it in and go, yeah. oh no we need and to put a couple this, more in I noticed and sure enough everybody times, sits like, in wow it, you know even though we get started and there might be some open spots left somebody shows up late and fills it and it's like just the right number i mean maybe we're off by one maybe maybe that's awesome but um but yeah i said wow oh, this is crazy i mean you'd think you were psychic or something <laughs> 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 but yeah it's uh kind of interesting so Jeff yeah. Wentz says, hi, Devin. Oh, hi, Jeff. Kelsey says, hi. Nate says, hi. Greg says, hi. Donna says, hi. Linda Morrison says, hi. Or Morrison says, hi. Julie Webster says, hi. And Robin Porter says, hi. Hi, hi friends. Hi. All right, Jen, your turn. Hi, everyone. I'm happy that everyone is here. Um, my name is Jen, and I am the leader of the Southeast chapter of Psychics Unite. I'm super excited about that. I'm also a paranormal investigator, um, a psychic medium, an author, and <laughs> I'm also a Reiki master teacher. And I also mentor students and others that who is part of Angel Wings, the Angel Wings group. Nice. Awesome. Very, cool. Very cool. Well, Gail popped in. Hi, Gail. So we got a lot of people in the, in, in the what we call in the, in the old days a chat room, so <laughs> not a Facebook Messenger thing, whatever you want. I don't know what do you call it. Anyone know? It's still a chat. Though. It's a chat screen or yeah. something like that. Yeah. The comments. Yeah. Comments, questions, helpful hints. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. All right. So we're here tonight, not only talking about all our spiritual guests because we're all very spiritual and, and very. Um, understanding we also ghost hunt and Devin ghost hunts with shadow hunters who's on here and very excited about that because Devin's show premieres next week here on shadow hunters page yeah yeah it's going to be called it's called truth bumps um and it's it's going to be a, a collaboration of um different spiritual uh ideas that help us connect with ourselves as well as the paranormal so uh, each week will be a different topic, and it'll just be us talking about and sharing our ideas and taking any questions that you have um, for an hour every Thursday. Nice. Cool. So when we start, Terry, why don't you give us how it all started and where did it start and okay. how many years it took us to put it together? And you did. The history. <laughs> the brief history in long form. Okay. So here... <laughs> Um, okay. Yeah, so it started out, despite the fact that um, I had a husband who had psychic abilities as a child and no one believed him and I knew other people like that. Um, I think, okay, wait a minute. I think before I do that, I'm going to describe what I think this really is from the original form. Okay, so mm -hmm. one time we were at a meeting and Scott said, oh, well, Terry's vision of Psychic Tonight. And I said, no, 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 time out on this one. This is not my vision. I think that this is a collective vision. I think that, uh, and I, I use the example of these, all these, these are all little people. He put them at the bottom of the screen. It's all these little people. And, and here's the church. Here's the church. And here's the steeple. <laughs> here's all the little people. Okay. And all these little people are saying, you know, um, uh, gee, I wish I had somebody who would believe me when I talk about my abilities, or I don't even know what's happening, or I'm so afraid of this. I wish somebody 
could help me understand this, or I wish I had somebody to talk to. So this, this similar kind of idea is, okay, so all these little people and they have these ideas and they think that thoughts are things and they're energetic things. And I don't know how it works. I just imagine that there's some morphic field or cloud, if you want to use the computer terminology, that um, thoughts go into clouds. Maybe they're sorted out. I don't know. Like all the thoughts like this go here. So all of these people are thinking, boy, I wish there was somebody out there who could help me. Um, I think it's. I think it collects. And I think that once something is, there's so much energy behind it, then it reaches a tipping point and it has critical mass and therefore it has to manifest. So um, I think that my role in this was just the, you know, like just like tap me, tap me on the shoulder here and they're like, hey, can you get this started? Um, and then there will be other people. you know, like, of course, I didn't know about Devin or Jen or any of the other amazing people who are leaders and helpers and are attendees at Psychics Unite, I had no idea. I just knew that, you know what? I'm just gonna do this. I have no idea what I'm doing, but it will work out. And before our very first meeting, I thought it's kind of like um, like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. So um, I show up at this place and it's a little bit different and I have to follow this path. And I'm just going to trust that the people that I meet along the way will also come with me. You know, like maybe somebody- Put them up, so maybe, put them maybe up. Maybe somebody doesn't have the uh, brain. No, I or have the brain, have... I, I don't have the courage. <laughs> somebody, you could point to somebody else. Somebody doesn't, somebody doesn't have a heart. Put them up. Whatever. Put up. Anyway, <laughs> but everybody's looking for something. And you know, her, her attitude was like, well, you know what? Maybe we can all get there together and we can work on this. And I looked at it kind of like, um, you know, the wizard gave them a mission and they had to accomplish this mission. In that particular case, it was they had to kill the witch and bring back her broom. But I think I look at the symbolism of the witch in that particular, in this situation anyway, as being like um, ignorance. And that, so we're collecting people as we go down this road and we're going to eventually just destroy the ignorance that's around this. Because the purpose of Psychics Unite is to organize and unite people both locally and globally to advance the understanding and acceptance of psychic perception. And the idea there is that if we can get people to understand what it is, then they can accept it. It's just, it's just hard for people to accept something they don't understand. And because most people don't do their homework on it, they're not going to understand it. And if you don't understand something, then it typically goes into what I call the fear, you know, the, the evil box. You know, I don't get it. It makes me feel uncomfortable. Therefore, it must be bad. So the idea is to just get out there, talk about it. And with a lot of things culturally that have been changing, you know, just within the last century, people just have to come, you know, come out of the closet or whatever. Talk about what you experience. Don't be afraid to say that um, because if people talk about it, then that will give encouragement to other people to talk about their experiences. And when more people come out and talk about it, then people really realize that, well, this isn't unusual. This is actually quite, com uh, quite a common thing. So um, that's what I just really encourage people to do is get out there and talk about it. It's not, you know, like your ghost, hunt ghost hunting now is, you know, become much more acceptable to talk about because, you know, there's TV shows that back it up and, um, you know, it's just, it's just another thing that we can talk about to advance it. Um, okay. So that's how I think that's, that's what I think was going on for all these years prior to this. So now um, I went to an interview with this lady um, she was in her office and she had this cubicle and it had all of these pictures of animals like pinned up to, into the cubicle wall. And I said, oh, you must have a lot of pets. And she says, oh, no, 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 I, I just have fish. But they're kind of like pets because they follow me around the room. And this was in the Chicago area. And she said, when I go to the shed aquarium, then all the fish come around me in the, you know, the big aquarium and everybody gets mad because all the fish are at me and they can't you know, get pictures of them or whatever. So um, I said, huh, they must sense your energy, don't they? And when I said that, I think she knew that I got it. And then I did what I call putting the key in the door and just unlocking it and allowing her to decide what she wants to do with that. So I said, so what other abilities do you have? 
And that's when she went into about like a half an hour unloading of how she had an accident. And then the next thing she knew there was this, she saw this girl on this operating table and she just felt so bad for her. And then she realized it was her. And then she got back into her body again. And then when she recovered from her surgery, then, well, now she could hear her grandmother talking to her and she had this thing with animals and she had, you know, all this other stuff happening to her. And I, I just saw how, I don't know, how she just felt like, uh, finally somebody's listening to me. Yeah. And I said to her, don't, yeah. And I said, don't you have anybody else to talk to about this? And she just looked really sad and she said, no, I don't. And I thought, oh, and I just wanted to cry with her because I felt so bad because I could see how isolated she felt because she was dealing with this alone. And so the whole way home, it was about two and a half hours home. And I just kept thinking, oh my gosh, like somebody should do something about this, you know? And I thought, well, there should be a social network or and this was probably, oh, I'm going to guess maybe eight years ago. Eight years. Yeah, it was about eight years. Ago. So, I mean, there was like Facebook, but there's a lot, not as much of a social thing going on. Um, but I had always thought about it because, and then of course, the more paranormal events that we went to, the more mediums I would meet, you know, and then I would talk about, well, you know, what if we did something and everybody was really enthusiastic about it. So then, um, we finally did, uh, we just started a support group in Madison, Wisconsin, and it worked and people came and it grew over time. And people were so thankful to be able to find something like that. And a lot of times, times people were making friends and they were making connections. So it was almost like Psychic Tonight became the hub that was connected to everything else. So like I would go to, like, for example, there was a spiritualist church and there was um, a, a channeling group. And then there was, you know, there's all these other little psychic variation groups, you know, but no, a lot of them didn't know about the other groups. So then I just kind of found out, or found out who everybody was and what they were doing. And then I would just put that out to everyone. And so then they knew that, you know, if they came to the psychic tonight, they would learn about all the other things that were going on. So we became the hub. Um, and then, uh, then we started, there was another group in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. We started that. And then it just started growing from there. So now we have other lovely ladies that are helping us out and, um, and men too. And yeah, we got men yeah. all over the place. So, yeah, so by the way, really Kathy's nice. in the, in the chat room, Alma's there. Um, Shannon Frickenschmidt, Jen says hi. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did I say her name right? Yes, okay. you did. She says hi. So hi, everybody. Welcome to the chat room. Yeah, the other thing, and I'll give it here and we'll give it at the end, but Devin is so gracious every week to put out the links for our Monday night um, chapter meeting. And we have, a, we have an all chapter meeting right now because of, mm -hmm. of the pandemic. And, and it's great because this really put everybody together. I think mm -hmm. this is what's going to make this grow even more is having this um, so weekly or bi-weekly or whatever we decide they are after the pandemic of an all group meeting. So come on out on our Facebook pages. We'll tell you how to get on our second tonight later. Um, our, all our Facebook pages, our new YouTube channel, our new website. Thanks to Jenna and her husband, Steve. I'm um, going to help us get our website up and running again. So we got a lot coming up and we're going to, we're just excited to talk about it this week, but come join us for that too, because it's interactive. It's a place for you to find a home. And I think that's my, my biggest thing about, oh, hi Trish. Um, I think the big, my thing, biggest thing is the community that this is me. You know, mm -hmm. when we first were talking about this before we rolled this out was what is, what is going to be the draw for psychics to come in? You know, and, and at first I didn't think people would want to come in because it, it's like, we always thought it was like a doggy dog world, you know? And so, but now you find out it's a community and, and the real mm -hmm. people that, that are doing the right work are in the group because mm -hmm. they want to help people. They want to help each other. They want to have those friendships. So. Yeah, so, we had some people say at the beginning, well, aren't you afraid that some people are going to come in and, you know, they're going to just, it's going to be all about them. And I said, you know, really, we haven't had that problem because, um, you know, and there's that, that saying like, you attract a like vibration and because it really isn't, I mean, the group, somebody said to me one time that, you know, it's, uh, well, you should kind of make it about you. And, and I said, oh, I didn't feel right. It's not about me. It's, it, it's not about me at all. It's about the group. And that's what's so great about, I like our Madison group. I'm going to talk about that because that's what I know the most, but um 
we have people who are brand new, just trying to figure out what they're experiencing all the way to people who have been doing, you know, psychic work for decades. And the people who have been doing it a long time really appreciate having a space to be able to pass their knowledge on to others and to see other people grow through what they've known. And the new people come and they learn so much and they're just so opened up. And it's so everybody is helping each other out and it's just become this great community. So like at first, I would always try to have like some kind of speaker come in and we talk about something, but then sometimes we, we just couldn't get anybody for that particular night and we would just leave it open and we'd have an open discussion. And honestly, those are some of the best nights. And Or, or second just, games. Yeah, it's like it, where we practice things. Oh, Scott would do dowsing. We, we, we used to do dowsing for dollars. Or we do psychic circles, <laughs> things like that. I love it. Yeah. You used to have dollars all over the church and you had the dollars for them. Yeah, that was kind of fun. Psychic but, but circles, yeah. those table tipping. Oh, uh, yeah. Energy work, meditations. Mm -hmm. You know, the meditations I do in my class all started yep. from our meditations at psychic tonight so that's been kind of cool so jen i'm going to go to you so mm -hmm. what how you know we talked to you about it but what made you what made you join us what made you come a part of this and become a very big part of this i wanted to help people um you know my entire life that's what i've always done and i saw a need in my own area um where people wanted to learn and everything else and so I wanted to be part of something like that, but I also wanted to continue to develop. And I did that by working with you on many of the things. And I mean, there were a lot of things that you helped me with, and I thought that was very important. Um, I wouldn't be who I am today without that help and without someone believing in me that I could do all the things that I'm doing now. And so that's what prompted me to seek out psychics unite and then um, like i said just to be able to be part of that to be able to help others who are in the same situation who doesn't have a place to go and you know isn't in your area but is in our local area and you know that's that's really it that's it in a nutshell you know but i'm yeah. excited so you guys met nate you know nate's a new yeah. student of mine that i met he just said in the chat room he goes he's thankful because he just joined us too he says i am thankful for you all and the things that I learned. It's nice to be able to discuss all this without facing judgment and shock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Um, the amazing thing about Psychics Unite is that it is just <clears throat> such a safe, open environment. Um, it's a way for us to express and discuss what we feel or what we're thinking things are and being able to receive feedback from others and ideas from others to be able to bounce that off of our own inner judgment. A lot of the times we go through this world and we think, okay, this is what I think is happening. And then you'll be introduced to new information or a new concept. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, wait, I've got a bigger piece of the picture. I can understand it better now. In fact, one of the earliest, um, before I actually got to work with my spirit guides and their personas, one of the earliest channeled messages that I had received from them was always honor your experiences, acknowledge your experiences, but always be open to receiving more information down the road. And honestly, that's what Psychic Unite has, has done beautifully. They've captured that wonderfully. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and Alma puts, I love being here, like learning new things. I always try to be here. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, and once you get in and understand and you find that community, you find that love, you know, mm -hmm. and and that's the biggest thing that if, if you are of, of ego or whatever, you don't stay, you know, you'll maybe come once and then you'll go because the other biggest thing that I found is that all of our businesses that have grown from our yeah. connections with everyone. Mm -hmm. And I think that's another important thing. So it's not only about you, but if somebody comes in that not a reader and wants to know a reader while well, you come to the group you're going to find a reader you know what i mean are you going to find a healer are you going to find reiki masters or you, you know what i mean because we got a few that are reiki masters you know and we got a couple group leaders that are just starting so it's great it's whatever it is so if you're looking to be a group leader you know contact one of us we'll be more than happy mm -hmm. to help you start out in, in that realm so that's for sure yeah yeah we did have a lot of people say at our meetings too that they were um, that they had gained a lot of um, clientele from us. But the other thing is, um, we get a lot of people that come to Psychics Unite 
because of some of the readers, because a lot of times people are coming to psychic readers because they are experiencing things themselves and they don't know who else to talk to. So we have one lady in particular, um, Raven, she's amazing, a referral person for us. She, um, she does a lot of readings and then just says, you know what, you're, you're so sensitive, just come on down. There's a whole bunch of people like you. And that just helps people to know. And even if a person only comes once or twice, just for them to have that understanding that, oh, okay, I get it. This is like a whole bunch of people do this and I'm not crazy. And I just, you know, ha asked a few questions, got the information that I needed and I'm fine. You know, they don't become regular members, but just for them to be able to have that and know that it's available, get some questions answered and then move on. So that's also another thing that, you know, that's really good. Some, sometimes people, if they, if they can't make it to the meeting, they'll call me and they'll say, oh, I'm sorry, I can't. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> it's not. I'm not keeping score here. You know, it is a safe place. You can come and ask them. I don't care. The people that need to be here will show up, and the people that don't need to be here for this meeting won't come. So it's okay. It's, just, yeah, it's, it's not. Fine. It's not people a, will get what they need. It's not a permanent thing. To. I was just talking yeah. to Sandy, who runs our Portage Group, Portage, Wisconsin, Western Group tonight about that too. I, she goes, well, there's a lot of stuff that my readings run late. I said, show up when you can. You don't have to yes. be there for our meetings for all night. You know, come down and join for an hour, especially with Zoom. Come in for a half yeah. hour, enjoy it, and then go off and put the kids to bed or help them with their homework or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. it's just it's just what you need when. You know, it was fun. We had a, we had a couple of people that that came like early on and then didn't come back for like a year or two. And then all of a sudden they come back again and then they start being more regular because they just weren't in the place that they needed right. to be either. Or you, schedule. Yep. Schedule. I mean, different. you know, if it's on a specific night and that's when you work or that's when you have your kids home or whatever, you know, it's, that's why we need to make it a little, we want to start making it a little bit more open so that it's, um, you know, online more so that that way it can be um, accessible to anybody. And these two ladies are going to help us do that. Mm -hmm. you yes, we are. yes, we are. Yes, we are. So Laura V's in the chat room. Hi, Laura. Um, and, hey, Laura. and for you, Devin, Jeff oh. says, working with and meeting Devin caused me to open some doors that had been closed for a very, very long time. Oh, that's wonderful, Jeff. Thank you. I am so happy to hear that because um, I was one of those people that was starting to seek out psychic readings just to be able to talk, be able to talk to somebody about my experiences and to better, be better understanding of that. And since I have started this work, um, just, you know, really consistently in a structured format that Psychics Unite helps me with, I have met person after person who is either afraid to talk about their experiences. I mean, to the point where they've got tears and that just breaks my heart. They think that they're off mentally. They think that they are damaged goods and there is no one in this world that's damaged goods. And I don't want anyone to think that um, just because they have some special abilities that the society we live in is uncomfortable with, uh, they don't have to be uncomfortable with it. And even if they choose to do nothing more than just become aware of it and just be able to understand it a little bit better, um, that's exactly what Psychics Unite is for. Yeah, exactly. We, um, well, I had Tina Marie on my show a few weeks ago, and um, she was here. And she runs one of our chapters in in North Indiana, um, you know, around South Bend, I think it is, and in, in Lower Michigan. And um, her first meeting, we had it at a Perkins, and that was kind of nice because we could have lunch, and, yeah. and and still had a meeting. I liked that. I was like, appetizers and psychics unite. And we're all about the food. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. Sure. That's right. <laughs> and um, so we were there, but we had two ladies that were, you know, in their 70s that came and they were crying because they had 70 years where they couldn't talk to anybody about first this. First time they, they were like, this is the first time I've ever told anyone. And, you know, like I said, when, when I met that lady with that interview that kind of triggered the whole thing, oh my gosh, I just, you could see how like, oh, I just need to tell somebody. So it is actually quite common for first timers at a meeting to cry when they talk, like we go around, introduce everybody, you know, what your thing is. If you ever want to ask any questions or talk about something, 
free to do that. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of tears for first timers because it is so cathartic to just know that you're really, loved, to yeah. know that you're loved and accepted when you haven't ever been that way before. And that, that's really, it's really amazing. And yeah. And so, yeah, there's, there's definitely, um, not so much on Zoom meetings, but when you get to the in-person in person meetings, that's yeah. when that stuff really kind of happens. And um, so, yeah, it can be very emotional. Because it's not broadcast live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we were like, oh, oh. yeah, and that's, and people have asked, can you, can you put your meeting online or record it? Um, well, we don't have to worry about it. We have, we have the, the we platform have Zoom now. Stuff. Yeah. Um, but for in-person meetings, we always kind of questioned whether we wanted to record that because um, we wanted to make sure that people felt safe. And if people felt that they were being recorded and broadcast, that that might not necessarily be a safe place for people. So we haven't done that for in-person meetings. Um, I think that if every, if maybe if it was a meeting that um, everybody had, speaker, had been there a while, or, or yeah, there was a or, speaker. Or we had a speaker, that. then we could speaker it through Zoom. Yeah. Or if it were a class. Yeah. Or a class or something. Yeah, yes. something yeah. like that. But when people are just kind of unloading, um, then I, I think that's something that we want to keep private and, and within a group. Great. I, I agree. So Jeff says again, he goes, he's a little verklempt on the Zoom meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and it's hard to, because, you know, um, uh, for people who are empathic, which a lot of people who come to Psychic Tonight meetings are, okay. <laughs> I mean, even if you're even slightly psychic, you're probably empathic, okay? So um, I think sometimes people who are empathic need to have that feeling of energy as to whether it's safe or not, which you really don't get. Um, and maybe it, some people you, do. You do, too. you do, but it's hard. It's not yeah, as easy yeah. as somebody, right, right, as you meet them, you know, because that's how we, we're all still readers. And we still all have to read over Zoom or telephones or across the country or across the world, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, I had one today across the world. I was very, very excited. Somebody from India called me and got a read. I know it was amazing. Mm -hmm. and, they, and, and it they, went well. And they fixed his computer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know wonderful, wonderful people from India. I've had the pleasure to work with many of them directly. Yeah. What was same? <laughs> My son has this joke. Okay, this is. I don't know. He's, he's just when, our when son, you call our son, our son. But it's yours if it's a bad joke. It's a bad joke, yes. <laughs> that's <my> yours. <laughs> well, that's your son. Like, <laughs> that's how that like, works. If something doesn't work, he would always just, you know, change his voice and say, Is your computer plugged in? Yeah. Thank oh no, thank you for calling tech support. Thank you for calling tech support. Is your computer plugged in? So he would say that, and um, well, we had it. I mean, I used to, yeah. I used to manage at Best Buy, to, and I had this yeah. lady call and scream at me that I sold her the wrong um, washer and dryer. She was just yelling. She was screaming. And I was the store manager. She was just going off, off, and she's you know, calling me names, bait and switch, blah 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 blah. I, why'd you sell me a pink washer and dryer? Or you know, you gave me a pink. I said, ma'am. That's the protective layer. Take it off. Oh, no. and you can, and then you don't scratch it during shipping. Yeah. Click. <laughs> yeah. So our son, he went when he was in high school, and he was in a computer programming class, and one of the girls couldn't get the computer to work, and he just he did that thing he does all the time. Thank you for calling tech support. Is your computer plugged in? And sure enough, the computer was not plugged, plugged in. in. Right. So, so from India, no, they know. Yeah. They well, right. it's it's an IT thing because <laughs> I have a bachelor's in IT, and the first thing you always want to check is have you restarted it? Have you rebooted yeah. it? Is everything plugged in? Is everything turned on? Because it's uh, whether you are working with hardware and not to go off on the tangent, but whether you're working with hardware or coding, that's what this show is. <laughs> it's the small little syntaxes that'll bite you in the in the backside. So <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, I forgot a period in that one line of code, or or whatever. It's it sounds Steven, silly, but it happens. Steve and Jen are that same way. So everybody yeah. knows Steve is Jen's husband, not my spirit guide. But my spirit guide is, is yeah. also Steve. So <laughs> multiple Steves. Steve is, Steve is also um, Jen's physical guide. 
sometimes, right? Wouldn't you yes. say that? He, you know, he's there for you in physical form. She's there more for him. There's a there's a yes. physical Steve and then there's the spiritual Steve. <laughs> yeah. I have a lot of Steve's in my life. That's all I can yeah. say. <laughs> Brother, <laughs> dad, I mean, hey, no, cool. you can- and you get my dead one coming there too all the time. That's <laughs> yeah. Right? Anyway, yeah, so what were we talking about? Oh, uh, oh the, uh, a... when I used to sell computers when they first came out no. with the CD-ROM drives, no. people used to think they could put their Cokes on them. Oh, the Coke so, order. Yeah. Oh, yeah, a cup holder. <laughs> yeah. Not good. But, they don't even uh, have those anymore. No, they're an extra feature if you want to be able to add that to that's yeah, weird, power. Yeah. That used to be sold. That was what sold them in those days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, anybody remember? Oh, we were, oh, Barbara says she loves our family. Oh, we love you too. Aww. But that's it's so neat. cool. But yeah, so that's that's how we started this. You know, that's how this all started. You know, and but I, I think that this connection is in the Zoom thing. I, you know, with us keeping it going after the live groups go back. I think that's mm-hmm. in, you know, and that's what it, yeah. we were talking about with a lot of people is the fact that they get to meet people from Albuquerque. They get to be, meet people from yeah. from Missouri, from Indiana, from Ohio, from Michigan. Donna's from Michigan. You know, I mean, all over, all the Wisconsin groups, Illinois groups. You know, Greg and Shadow Hunters, and soon to be Minneapolis group, and you know, mm-hmm. so more and more and more are coming in. But that's what's so neat. And we didn't have that, even though we had groups in all these other towns. We never had that much. You know, like Becky, you can Becky that right? Way. Becky went from. Mattoon was the only other one because she also did shows there so we would go down in the shows and we would do both so you know and we knew everybody from the shows also were in the group so you know that was okay but a lot of them that were farther away we couldn't you know you couldn't right. we had people ask about that oh do you have zoom meetings and uh we didn't even know what zoom was I, that's when i first heard i'm like well, what's, what's zoom, zoom meeting what's yeah zoom? yeah so now it's um and now we're broadcasting coming. live on youtube and and Facebook. thank you covid <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, honestly, out of all the challenges that this year has presented, so many unique individual challenges for every one of us, this has been one of the biggest blessings to unfold. I only joined Psychics Unite in April because of the the opening up of the all chapter meetings on, on Monday. I had met uh, Terry and Scotty uh, almost a year ago in November, 2019, with the idea of you know, working with Psychics Unite and the Columbus, Ohio chapter and working on developing my gifts and and understanding them better. But I didn't have a real clear picture on how to do that um, until this all kind of started. Yeah, it's really, I think it's really forced everybody to just become more adaptable to different things. And yeah, it's been, uh, it's, I think it's been good. It is, I think it's been Although I know a lot of people are really missing in-person meetings there's oh lot. yeah oh yeah. when are you going to start up again and where we live yeah. it's very very strict with yeah rules. in madison so we but, can't do anything but that's where sandy called me today and said can we start holding meetings because in in their communities they can do 25 percent of the capacities so mm-hmm. if they get a library you know the room sits 100 they can have a meeting for 25 people mm-hmm. that's true you know so they're going to they're looking at and and laura v's in the chat room right now or and Laura's we were just talking about this before we came on the air with them and they're going to do it I said let's go for it let's have all these meetings because people want to get together and I know for a fact a lot of people from the Madison area will drive up because they want to be in person again they want to you know and it's the friendships we make we make them online it's great but but I knew Devin before I knew Jen for many years Jen and Steve from all the ghost hunting stuff we did together yeah and, and that's what's so cool about this is, is now we're doing it with our friends even more, but we want more people to be our friends. Yeah. You know? Yes. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, a meeting online and having these conversations online, that's very bonding and connecting, but it's not quite like having a physical in-person experience. So, you know, over the next six months or so, I'm, I'm really hoping, fingers crossed, things just kind of lift a little bit. Um, and we start to see an end of this chapter and we can, you know, start having some of those. I know that's the goal of the Columbus, Ohio chapter is eventually move to physical meetings. Um, but for now we're starting with Zoom. Right. And, you know, I think there's an opportunity too, that as we move back to physical moving, uh, meetings in all of the chapters, 
um, to still have a Zoom um, component for anyone who's not able to make a physical meeting. Um, and you can still, you know, participate and be there in the room uh, and still partake in, in the conversations and in any games that are being played. And, and I think that's, that's oh, go ahead, Jen. I think that's important too, because I know um, for my, you know, for myself, there are people that I know from all over the world and they actually want to be part of that. And, you know, I've invited them to the all chapters, but they're kind of shy. And so they're waiting on me to do one on Zoom or, you know, if we do a, a Facebook meeting type setting, um, but that's what they're waiting on. And I think that's great. You know, it's, I mean, it's going to be, it, it, it will be great to do it in person, but for those people who are from all over to still be able to have that access for them, I think is going to be worthwhile because I don't know how much, you know, like here in the States, we don't, this is, this is it for us, you know, of, of having a safe place to go. And I don't know if they have that in other areas. So it's great to offer that for them. Well, you know, I have a question. This is a question out for anybody listening, if they want to put in a, you know, something in the comments or whatever. But um, if you were coming to a meeting and you didn't know really what it was or you wanted to share, would you be, be more comfortable in a Zoom meeting that had, say, 10 people or less, like a small meeting? Because I know that it's kind of intimidating to, you know, to, you know, raise your hand, kind of chime in or something when there's, you know, 20, 30 people in a Zoom meeting. Um, and that's what I'm wondering if, like, we kept something to like a limited number so that people could actually talk and not feel that they're, it's, it's just, it's not so overwhelming. Yeah, but you know, the thing that I've been trying to do in, in the Zoom meetings is I try to get everybody in the room. You know, I will, the newer people there, I will say, mm -hmm. you know, hey, Nate, or hey, Lacey, hey, you know, do you have anything to add? Mm -hmm. You know, because that's my big thing. I mean, we're not here to monopolize anything. We're here for everybody to talk together and learn together. And the more we can do that and, and, you know, and help people because everybody needs to be heard. Everybody needs friends. You know, we just don't have them right now. But I, where I, where I was thinking about moving forward, you know, with our Madison chapter is, is that we'll post on their Facebook page this week's, this week's in-person meeting will also be Zoom. So if you don't mm -hmm. want to show up, then you don't have to show up. But mm -hmm. then the following week, we won't do Zoom. You know, so it's just the local personal, you know what I mean? It's just, mm -hmm. it's more, it's more about trying to figure out what makes the most comfortable. Um, Cause, but Nida was saying, but her group was sharing um, from Shadow Hunters mm -hmm. too. She goes, she loves her, their meetings. Um, and then she loves our meetings too, you know, because it's family. And, mm -hmm. and that's what it becomes. It becomes our family. It becomes, you know, that time to hang out. And we've had people. Uh, Even with your couples. crazy uncle. <laughs> yeah, we've had yeah. a couple. Maybe, we've had some yeah. couples that started um, dating because of psychic connection. Yeah, yeah. So, um, oh, should Not I, us. Should I, should I, should I, I'm gonna tell that thingy that makes me so mad. Okay, okay, go ahead. So when I was coming up with all the different ideas that we could do with psychic, and we should probably get into some of the other ideas that, you know, yeah, we, we would like to do in the future. We got plenty of time. Ready. There's no one after us. We okay. can keep talking until um, Hogan's Heroes comes out. Yeah, well, we want to be responsible for <laughs> the time as well. So anyway. Um, I'll tell the story about Hogan's Heroes next. So okay, so anyway, uh, I thought about, you know, there's a lot of people, again, because they're kind of afraid to come out and talk about this. Um, maybe it's difficult to start dating people because you're afraid that, oh my gosh, they're going to find out about, you know, what I experienced and then they're going to think I'm crazy or weird. And um, yeah, said the guy who never told me other than the bakers. Um, you didn't really... I had to kind of figure it out after a while. I mean, um, yeah, because I was made fun of all my life. So yeah, why so am I, I going to get the girl? I, mean, I, I didn't the girl really I think know is about hot it. And going to tell her about gold. Yeah. But you don't find out a lot of things about someone until you marry them. Um, you know, because then you're like, hey, we're married. I sealed the deal. Okay, here's what it really is. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> true, very true. Yeah, cranky, so, ornery, <laughs> yell, <laughs> scream, make fun of you in front of people. Uh, okay. Da, 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 da. okay. Um, but anyway, but we're married. See, now I, I lost my train of thought here. Um, you know that dumb thing that you want. 
Oh, the dumb thing that you hate. I hate okay, so I said, why? We're gonna do we it. Have, I know we're gonna do it. Why don't we have a thing called psychic it. singles where people can go and find somebody because there's a lot of people who are looking for somebody who also understands what they understand. But, but here's what I want to change. If you could find a partner who accepted, I know, I know, Jen, to, Jen yeah. and Steve can create this for us. I know that. Oh no, but actually, but no swiping. One. There is no swiping for it. You have to look at it and you have to psychically tell it which way you want it to go so if you wanted to swipe right you gotta go right and then it's gotta swipe right by itself if you don't psychically make it happen then it's not gonna happen now actually there's a there's a company um that we can work with that already has it so it's not like if we had five people that sign up with our group that that's all there would be but it's multiple different um companies can use the same dating group so once you get into that you can get into the whole thing and they're all in this kind of you know, advanced consciousness, spirituality kind of group. So um, that's something that, you know, if people are interested in, and want to use that, um, I know it's probably, it would be great for guys because there's so many women. So they have a lot to choose from. Linda Morrison says, but, this is too funny. Hello, L. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but, but um, I, I like yeah, that. So I, I like that. that you have to psychically swipe though. That's what I want. If uh, we're going to do this, that's what I, you have to psychically swipe right or left. Yeah, make them call me. Make them call me. <laughs> could be like, um, it could be like the dating game. Only instead of questions, you're like trying to psychically pick out features on their face. Yeah. yeah. I wonder. Okay, so okay for the empaths out there, could you like put your hand over the picture and then like pick up something from them? Or <laughs> I don't. I don't it's not know. Psychometry. Yeah, you get together and read each other. So. Well, if you get together, you can definitely feel their energy. Yeah. Um, you can feel the, a lot of other things too. Yeah. <laughs> you went down this road. I'm just. And how long did it ride. take us? <laughs> we went from good, clean, fun to down in the gutter in zero I know. Two seconds. You know it's going there with me. That's the pain. It's always there with me. You it wanted to bring this. Less than an hour, Devin. Less than an hour. Oh, I'm, here comes oh, all the funny, funny faces in the chat room are going yeah. crazy. Oh we tried God. so hard to be good. <laughs> no. Why? Who said you had to be good? This is my show. This is terrible. Yeah. No, um, I, you know, I think I know that it can be hard, like coming out, coming out of the psychic closet is definitely a trick. Um, I'm in my 40s and coming out in the psychic closet in your 40s is even more fun. <laughs> um, so I actually, I hope to highlight a little bit more about this in my experience in one of my shows in the near future, because I do think it's important. And in fact, even recently, a few others have come to me and said, how do you even start having this conversation? How do you look at someone that you've known for 30, 40 plus years and say, hey, I think I've always been psychic. Like that's a hard conversation to have. So um, I, actually when you're dating, that's the easiest time. Hey, you should know that this is a real part of my life. Now, that was a hard lesson for me to learn. It's cost me a lot, but I think um, it's very important to be upfront with anyone new that you meet. But coming out to people that you know and love um, that, have, that have been there for a long time, that can be a shock. You know, and, and this is, you know, we're talking about it from the psychic thing, but this is from the transgender thing, from the gay, from a lot of things out there. Which, yeah, mm -hmm. we have to start being, as a society, we have to start being way more accepting of people and allow them to be exactly who they are. God, that's yes. the biggest thing with psychics tonight. That's what people that, like it because they right, can finally be who they are. There's it's, no judgment. Yeah, there's a level, a level of vulnerability that people can have. And yeah, and you can be vulnerable and be safe. Yeah. And it al almost takes the vulnerability away from being vulnerable. Yeah. You know? um, and it neutralizes that. And, um, and I think what that is, is being vulnerable is really about being authentic. And if anyone can't live authentically, then they can't truly be who they are. And so that's why we need to have a space where people can be authentic. Yeah. And I think that's, and I think that's why people like it so much too, because um, finally they can be who they are and have other people not only tolerate who they are, 
but will actually help them be more of who they are. Embrace it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So Jen, you and I have been to the ghost hunting things for quite a while. Yes. Don't you find that, that even in the ghost hunting realm, it's getting way more spiritual because people are more and more coming through and even the ghost hunters really are not really yeah. ghost hunters. They're, they're, you know, they're on the, they're on the psychic spectrum too. Yes, absolutely. I see more and more of that all the time and not just, you know, with our group, but with other groups out there and everyone that we come in, in contact with, I mean, that's, they're opening up more and more to that. So yeah, it is, it is making a huge shift for that instead of the other way you know and scotty and i had talked about that years ago um we you know we recognized okay the paranormal investigation tv shows were really really popular and and, and maybe it was just because we were changing um and at first the paranormal tv shows were great because it it allowed us to be like oh my gosh somebody's actually talking about ghosts out there that's really cool but then we had recognized early on we said you know what that's the thing now but everything trends and i said the the paranormal tv show trend is really hot but that's going to start to fade out to be more spiritual stuff coming um but i think it was good to have the paranormal because it it's more of a gateway drug it, yeah, yeah. It's more of an earthy physical. I went there again, sorry. I used it, you know, <laughs> they use tools, physical tools for this stuff. And a lot of times people need, especially people who are coming from a materialistic standpoint, which really don't believe in the spiritual stuff, um, they really need to see Yeah, but tell them physical. about your key, because Terry always talks about the key. You know, when you go talk to people at Ghost Honey, and how you say, even about me, you put your key in, and then you That's turn That's like what it. I said about with, um, with the story, like, I just, you know, you have to say something to, um, to let them know that you're safe, that you're okay. So for example, what I would do, um, oh God, this is probably like 10 years ago. I would, this was a, a common technique that I would use. Um, I would say, oh yeah, my husband does uh, paranormal investigations. Okay. Paranormal investigations. It's pretty benign. Um, you know, yeah, you have to be like super conservative and not really either be like really super skeptic, but a skeptic will might be okay with paranormal investigations because it's an investigation. Um, so that was kind of a way of getting in the door. So, and you know, um, you were talking about, uh, Devin, you were talking about um, how do you, how do people come out to family members? So then you, you there's kind of levels that you can use. For me, it was, oh yeah, my husband does the par paranormal investigations. And then, you know, if they said, oh, that's so cool, because blah, 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 and then be yeah. like, oh, yeah, well, yeah, by the way, he's also a, a medium. And then, oh, that's really, so then I could talk about it. Um, and then, and but that was before Psychic so Tonight started. Now, um, I I'm a medium. About, yeah, now, now it's like, oh, exactly. I need, see, for, me, for me, I need to talk about it with people. But now, for example, um, I work with, I do caregiving and I work with a lot of older clients. And so I don't know where they are with that. So, um, you know, and I'll put it out there like, um, you know, oh, my husband, he, you know, he does freelance work. Oh, what does he do? And I said, well, you know, he's a medium and he talks to people who have passed and, and helps people with, you know, getting some closure and stuff like that. Um, so I'll kind of use that and that, you know, they might kind of give me some looks, but um if they, as they get to know me, then once they start accepting me, then other things that I say will be more accepted. Um, well, I've but given I've one found, of our clients, her sister, in, in readings. And, oh, actually, and their, almost, and almost her whole family, the whole family so. has gotten Aww. to me um, because my client has a crush on him. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> <Aww. laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, but now, now what I do is now I'm just okay with it. And I'll just say, oh yeah, I started this group to help people with psychic abilities. And, you know, I have these support groups and stuff like that. And, and I will say, because there's a lot of people out there who experience something and there's misinformation and I'll say, it's either a cult, it's demonic, they're going crazy or they're perpetrating some fraud. So that's what people, those are the, that's the, and I describe it as misinformation. I say, 
you know, there's so much misinformation out there that people think it's, you know, it's a cult, it's demonic, they've been crazy or it's some kind of fraud. And then by introducing it that way, I've already hit the main objections. Yeah. And, um, and I've already expressed to them that these are misbeliefs and misinformation that's out there. So that way, if they already have that, now they're in the box of being a person of misbelief. So then they're not going to say, oh, I don't believe that. <laughs> so right. Then um, it gives them more opportunity to come up with their things. And a lot of times, you know, and I've said this before, I'll do the little camera thing. This is what happens when I tell people that I run a psychic group. Then I get this, they lean in and then they look, make sure nobody's listening. Okay, this is what happens to me. <laughs> I never tell anybody, you know, and I get that so often. And, you know, that's why I tell people, go out and talk about it. Allow yourself to be authentic, be vulnerable because, oh my gosh, more often than not, if you say that in a group of three or more people, somebody's going to have something. Like one time we were at a... Um, yeah, oh, we were at the Toledo. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I was. I was just going to agree. Yes. In, in any uh, in any situation where I'm asked, "What do you do for a living?" I'm always very honest with them. Oh, I'm a psychic medium, and uh, not only do I offer readings for individuals, but I also help others uh, connect to their gifts. And um, I always get one of two responses. Oh my gosh, that's so fascinating. I've always always wanted to get a reading, but I'm terrified mm -hmm. because of some of those misinformation points that you pointed out, like the way that mediums are portrayed in the media, um, maybe a bad experience that they had prior to, they always feel like it's going to be something like, oh, you're going to tell me I'm going to go bankrupt or when I'm going to die. And that's not what a reading is really about at all. Right. Um, or I get the, I get the second response, which is, oh my gosh, I have no one to talk to. Um, and, and, and since I've been working in this, I get a lot of that where these people are just absolutely relieved to know that they are not alone and what they're experiencing is valid. And see, but look at how you've empowered people just by not being afraid to say it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's so you, you help so many people just by saying what you're experiencing, but you know what I would like to do. Oh, it's Jen. Did you have some stuff that you yeah, have? Jen. Yeah. Um, have you ever had someone come to you and say, oh, I have some sort of weirdness or my daughter has some sort of weirdness. I mean, people say that like they're afraid to say that. And it's like, it's really okay <laughs> to say it. You know, it's like, you're in good company. Well, and you know, I think a lot of it too might be some carryover stigma from previous lifetimes because a lot of us are coming off of a scenario where admitting something like that and you're a witch, um, you know, and I think that's why personally I feel um, connected to this work and also um, the healing of the witch wound work. That's also very, so, so much very needed because they do kind of go parallel a lot of, a lot of times those gifts or um, uh, pathways will intertwine. Absolutely. Yeah. So we have a couple in, in here. So Kelly in the oh, chat room goes, yeah. Sorry. Kelly, uh, Kelly goes, kids need to know it's all good mm -hmm. and not build up walls to block their gifts. Yeah. Um, then okay. struggle as adults when they spontaneously open. I'm very yeah. interested in writing stories and or books, screenplays, tackling this topic, kids. Kelly, you'll help us on, on our new webpage. Um, we'll definitely hit Kelly oh. up on this. So, um, and then Nick, Nick from Shadow Hunters, mm -hmm. the group leader, you know, the one that runs this page. Um, he goes, when I first started, he saw nothing. Now, because of doing paranormal investigations for 15 years, I can definitely say that I've opened my third eye within my, my ability. Yeah. 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 Because the more you do this work, the more it expands, you might start off with one gift and then all of a sudden you start having smells and hearing and sight. It's, it's actually really cool. It's so much fun. <laughs> yeah. So it is. Julie, what's kind of funny, Julie O'Mara Webster goes, as Scotty says, I'm a recovering Catholic. I am. Um, but I have a brother that's a priest, so I don't discuss investigations a lot and some of my, with some of my family members. Yeah, it's true. I mean, mm -hmm. I understand. Um, and even my recovering Catholic self, my brother doesn't believe in what I do. Um, 
Mom? Does he come out and actually say that? Oh. Ouch. So, Ken, if you're watching. Mm. <laughs> we got we got backup. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. But, but that's what it is. I mean, that you know, it's tough. It, it's the same thing. Like I said, any, any one of us coming out and not being what somebody claims normal. It's, I'm tired of that. That's why I wish we could come up with a near. That's why I like using spiritual or psychic or something like that, because I'm tired of paranormal. That's dumb. Because yeah. why is it, you know, unless we're making it para the paranormal, that's the only way I would do it. We would have to rewrite the word. But everybody thinks it's another branch of something. And it's not. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the thing that I want everybody to understand that it's a part of everything. The spiritual beliefs, talking to dead people, seeing dead people, having them inter interact and work with us is all normal. Well, what if, okay, so that the TV show, you talk about the show that you're... No. Okay. Not even, okay. no. Well, okay, I'm just going to um, note this idea down that I have, but anyway. Okay, um, note it down. Okay, hold on, just give me a second. So we'll give her time um, to talk. Jen, go. Yeah, Your talk, topic. because I've got to write this off again. My topic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's well, talk about kids. Let's talk about kids. Okay. Um. So what do you do when you have kids come to you or parents come to you and they're saying, hey, my kid is seeing things or they're having trouble sleeping? What do you do? What What is your go-to? I drop everything and help them. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I I do the same, but I mean, what? But even what in is shows, even I I was at Vic, uh, Victory of Light in Cincinnati, mm -hmm. the largest spiritual show in the United States. Love it. You know, and who runs it? Um, Victor Puda. Hi, Victor. Um, but even even there, I had I had I was booked all day. This family came, a couple families that day came. How about three or four? Came, I would stop my readings and I would drop and I would do theirs and I would do it for free. Because right. to me, when I was a kid, if I had Psychic Unite, I would have been great. You know, I would have been wonderful, but I didn't. And mm -hmm. this was the 60s and early 70s and it's not a good time to see ghosts, you know? And and even today, there's still that stigma that it's not mm -hmm. good to see ghosts. When, when we know all the ancient ancient things had shamans had had oracles they had all that you know you saw it even in the matrix you know you know that they're all there it's been that way forever we've always had that spiritual leader and then that warrior it's just been normal so all those nations and all those societies believed it and then in, then we got into this where we now don't believe it because we want power so right. i'm gonna i'm getting off my soapbox but but that's mm -hmm. the thing you know and we need to make sure that these kids feel comfortable from the moment they're on you know and and then like I did I even did a reading for the parent because I had to make sure the parent knew that that they had to be okay with this right now psychics unite has a group for children correct yes no there's okay. a um there's a facebook group well it's it's for youth mentors okay um now what we want to do and what I, I did a couple of years ago um but then you have uh I, I talked to the principal at our local high school and I came up with a, um, you know, I had a poster of, you know, who are the people that might be interested in? I call it the psychic club. Okay. Um, the, the only reason we didn't get it started was because of um, you have to have a faculty advisor. Okay. Uh. So then what I thought about is that instead of calling it psychic club, call it the Psy club, like PSI. Um, psychic science investigators. Okay, so if we put the word science in it, um, but I made a list of, you might be interested in this club if you, and then it's basically like, now I know Devin and, and Jen, I think you've seen it too. Like some of our shows will have the, I'll just have like little um, colorful pieces of paper and then we'll have a, a cutout board that says what the ability is and then a description of it and then people can initial what it is. So that they can see, oh, other people have this too. Um, and they can also learn about all the other ones and what they mean. So I made a list of all these different psychic abilities, a quick definition, so that that way students could just go and say, oh, that's what that, that's like a thing. Okay. And then they could potentially come to this group. Now, um, one of the reasons, and I don't have the sheet with me, but um, one of the uh, forms that I made to promote it was explaining why it's important to have a group for kids with psychic abilities. And one of the things was that 
um, when a student has these abilities, especially empathic students in a high school with all that hormonal drama and emotional stuff, <laughs> how is a student going to effectively do their work if they don't know how to control this and deal with this? So this they, is don't. Yes. they don't. Yes. <laughs> and, this, and this is why we need to be in school. Kevin's got one right now. Yes. Yes. I was one. Like I'm yeah. sitting here thinking, oh my God, had I had anything like this in my high school, my middle yeah. school, yep. we could get this to the point where it's a normalized, a normalized topic. I, 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 like I went through the first half of my life thinking that I was just highly imaginative. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, and that, that to me, I'm, I, you know, and I know that there's a reason for everything and I'm not, I'm not going to get too well was, what was me about it, but I'm like, you know, I could have been working with this a lot sooner. Yeah, and I, I just agree. understood what was happening. Yep. Yeah. And my I mean, Okay. It's so it's so weird because after high school, I mean, I've reconnected with a lot of people who have the same things going on. And it was like, it was a big secret at our school. Nobody said anything, even though all this stuff was going on. And now fast forward, and now everybody is starting to talk about it. And it's amazing. But yeah, I agree, Devin. I mean, if we would have had Psychics Unite like years ago, like where have y'all been? Like for our entire life, we needed you, you all like years ago. Little people feeding the uh, feeding the cloud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but and you know, Jen, I think we were having the experiences we needed to to be able to effectively help with where we want to take Psychics Unite. And yeah. I, I mean, like I'm, I can't, I can't help as much as I, as I plan to not having the stories and the perspectives as, as an empath um, to be able to help others in the same situation. Right. Yeah. I, I agree. I mean, I think that all the life experiences that we have had up until this point was so that <laughs> we would know what to do and how to help somebody else who's in a very similar situation and to show them that, hey, yes, we've gone through the fire. We know what it's like, but you're going to be okay and you can do this and you are going to be thriving and you'll be looking back one day and be like oh my gosh I did this and I never thought I could and here I am today I just got so. the truth bumps yeah <laughs> <laughs> Thursday yeah. 7 p.m shadow hunters that's, that's right why it's my show truth bumps. yeah well, and see and then also with that I felt that you know if we could test it in the high school let's just test it because High school students are going to, you know, everybody's joining a club in school anyway. So, you know, this is just another, and kids are so interested in this kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, they're like, ooh, cool. And so it would be really fun to do, or even have like some kind of like table tipping display just to get them into it or something. But, um, but then I thought if it was effective at the high school level, we could prove it at that level. And then we could take it down to middle school. And then if we could prove it there, then we could take it down. You know, because ideally you want to help the kids right at the beginning. You don't want them to struggle for all these years and get so far behind in their ability to work. I mean, could we as Psychics Unite work together to find programming that would help students learn better? Like, how can we help a child in the classroom when they have this? Meditation. Yes. Oh my God, please start meditation and, and yeah. early education. Yeah. Preschool. And how can we educate? Yes. Oh, how can we educate teachers? Yes, what, adults. What, when the child is off looking or talking to somebody in the corner, what's going on? You know, and, and just to be able to educate the educators to be aware of this kind of stuff. And actually, we were in Toledo at an event, and you know, we were having like a, a psychic night sign up thing, and um, we met some people who were teachers, and we we're talking about it, and she said you know, but I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be a, a faculty advisor. And I was like, why wouldn't you? And she said, because of the stigma it would have. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, you know, okay. I understand that. I don't, and, but maybe I don't understand what kind of stigma that would have for her career. I don't know. However, I guess there's decisions that I've had to make in my life that have not been popular, but I made them. And in the process of making them, I saw how it helped so many people in the long run because I yes. did. 
And, you know, I just, I so want to encourage people, even if you're afraid, just do it anyway. Do the right thing because it'll all work out. It'll, yeah. it'll be worth it. If you're um, feeling called to do it, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, but, so but any again, teacher all hardest. over the country, we want to do this. Teachers, and wherever yes. it is. So if any, if we can get one, that's and the we, thing. We just need to get one to start. To be a faculty advisor. And if we can get and one say, group yeah, and get it to work, then we can then prove it at other districts and go see it already works in this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But, I have some teacher friends. If you see this and you're interested, let us know. Hmm. I think yeah. I think I know of one you might there be referring to. <laughs> yeah, I think you do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so change the topic just a little bit. Do we need to go through, and I know you do, you've talked to a lot of other mediums on your show and stuff. Do we need to kind of go through what some of the different abilities are so that people um, are just kind of aware of it? Should we just kind of do that? Okay. Sure. Um, I'm going to start naming some things By the off. Way. By the way, tonight's show is called Terry Talks About. Terry Talks About. Oh, you know what? <laughs> oh, oh. So back when Scott was doing his, his other radio shows more often, I said, if I ever had a radio show, I would call it Don't Get Me Started. <laughs> I like that. That's <laughs> cute. <laughs> hey. Get me started. So so oh, Nick, yeah. Nick, we might have another show on Channel 100. <laughs> <laughs> don't get me started don't i get like started that with Terry Rose. man you do have two more days in the week so. I know. Two more. <laughs> well there's more time slots beyond beyond what we've got to yeah we're all just seven o'clock across the board so yeah mm -hmm. but anyway so um i'll okay, get her so started let's, 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 <laughs> i and i don't have the sheet of paper in front of me but i'm just gonna kind of go down this is back. the list of stuff um okay First of all, let's quick go through the clairs, the basic clairs, the clairvoyance. Clairvoyance is when you can see things that other people probably can't, whether it's spirits, whether now that would be like aura seeing would be a part of that. Um, when you see, you know, colors around people um, that are, you know, their energy, that would be aura seeing, which is a form of clairvoyance. Um, Clair audience. And again, ladies, raise your hand and chime in if there's oh. to add to those yes well just a real quick side note on clairvoyant that can be with your physical eye or your mind's eye mm -hmm. i thought because i could see with my mind's eye i wasn't clairvoyant and scotty quickly corrected me correct yeah and, and so I've been working with this i can see more physically sorry go yeah. ahead Jen. sorry clear audience um you can physically hear it or you might be hearing it within using your psychic ears so just because somebody else doesn't hear it doesn't mean that you are not hearing it at all yeah, i've I, had I, both experiences both with my physical ear and inner ear mm -hmm. and, and too many people that, that i talk with i you know you know i'll just use Devin because she even admitted it but i mean it's the fact that we hear it in our mind's voice you know, we think that that's our voice and it really isn't. That's just the easiest way for them to connect because, you know, spirits don't have vocal cords to make sounds. So how are they getting us to try to do it? They're trying to affect energy or what, you know, spirit boxes or other things, you know, they're trying to come through other ways. And that's what, and that's why we do that in the thing. But the clear audience and the clear is, is there. I mean, because at one time I did a reading and I got pictures of, of you know, um, desperate housewives. So I knew that there was problems. You know, I knew there was divorce right. and that type of stuff. And that's what I saw right away going in. I was like, oh, okay, I know where we're going. <laughs> they <laughs> talk in mean? code sometimes, yeah. Right. They do, yes. but, <laughs> but then you always go, oh, I got it. Yeah, you know, oh, okay. I know where we're All going. Right. So the rest of the reading is going to go this way. Now, okay, I got it, you know. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. but so there, there's multiple ways to, to receive it. Not everybody receives it in both ways. Some re receive it in one way, some do in the other. You know, it's just, or both. I mean, it, so there's a lot of different ways. And that's the biggest thing that I want to talk about too, before we get going into all these other things is the fact that the more we accept everything we have, because not everybody has everything and not everybody has nothing. You know, we are somewhere on that spectrum. You know, we're somewhere, somewhere, and everybody feels something different. And, and that's what makes it so exciting for me is to be able to get messages from people that are very similar because down the road, 
the three of us will be doing a show together in Indianapolis because there's no shows down there. So we're going to be doing that once COVID's over. But but the, when you see all three of us working on stage together, it's going to be amazing because we all be different. And, and that's what's incredible. So that's why I don't want anybody. And that's, you know, I told both of you guys, because both of you have been my students. And I said to both of you, I don't want you to be Scotty Rourke. Right. I want you to be Devin. I want you to be Jen. That's what I want you to be. And I want you to be better than me. I want you to be the best you can be. And that's what it's important. And, and that's what we have to do, you know, when we're teaching them through cycling tonight, is to know that this is not about the ego. It's about bringing that person to their potential. You know, Vince Lombardi had to start football, you know, to me, that's what I think started football, you know, because he made it popular. You know, and that's the same thing. He was a head coach. He wasn't a player. You know, so coaches have to be there just as strong as the people doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes total sense. Um, and, and another big thing is not to compare yourself to others, because as we stated before, you will read or have your own experiences that aren't going to be quite like anybody else's. And that's just part of your unique signature. Psychic abilities are kind of like a fingerprint. It's just the way that you get the messages. Um, and they evolve, they shift, they change, they grow. Um, I've heard recent stories where um, the way people used to perceive messages is not how they receive them now anymore. Um, <clears throat> and any of those scenarios can happen. It's perfectly natural. It's perfectly normal. And the other thing too, is that there's no race to get there. Everybody gets there in their own time and there's no age where you, um, there's no age limit. Like you don't have to start at five or seven or whatever. You start whenever, wherever you are and you just work at your own pace. You will get to where you're supposed to go, but don't rush it. Don't, it's, it's not a race. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. I'm trying to go back to look in their thing. I think maybe it was Julie in our chat room. She said that right about coming out at 50. You know, oh, yeah. I think she came yeah. out at 50. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's whatever age that, that you are accepting the fact that spirit talks with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and, and want to make that connection again. Yeah. Yep. Oh, sorry, right. no COVID, just allergies. Okay. <laughs> I was outside all day yesterday. So, I'm just like, oh, uh, all day. Uh, all right. We got clairvoyant, clairaudient. Um, Claire, let's talk about Claire cognition. And this, oh. I didn't really think of that as being something that I had until I listened to the lady talk about it. And she said, you know, like when you're just doing your thing and all of a sudden a thought pops into your head and it's like, oh, that's the answer to the question that's I was it. thinking about, or that's this, or, you know, and sometimes people say, well, it's just your subconscious mind is working on that. But, um, you know, a lot of times for me personally, stuff will just come to me like I'll just know the answer to something all of a sudden and now sometimes it will be I'll just put it out there like hmm, I'm interested in that I mean lately now I just use Google like I say okay Google and I think that oh I just went off um, <laughs> hi sorry, I didn't hello get that. overlords name Google oh, anyway. um, <laughs> but I use it all the time and so you know I would get I get answers from from the internet but um but a lot of times when it's the deeper more um more important things in life uh i'll just I'll all of a sudden get it and i'm just like i don't even know where that came from but all of a sudden i just have it and she said it's that type of thing where it's not something you're working on it's not something else but you just know something or sometimes when uh, i'm talking to a person and they need some advice and I really don't know what to say, but I just let my mouth keep rambling. And it's almost like I take a step back and just keep talking. And then, oh, I so needed to hear that. And I, I kind of look at that as almost a, kind of a clear cognition as well. Or is, it's probably when is whatever. But No, I would agree with that. Because in the, often when that happens, in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, my God, this makes no sense. I'm totally putting my foot in my mouth here. And then at the end of it, they're like, that's exactly what I needed to hear. And I'm like, oh, OK, well, great. Perfect. That worked out. But, but yeah. you're right. That's a part of our clear cognition. But it's also part of channel. Yeah. 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 But, say I, think, you channel. but I think I think clear cognition is channel. 
I think it's a part of it. Yes. It because yeah. it's like you're like hooked up to something and that information. But, boom, but I say claircognition is, is knowing something as much as you know your name is Scott. Yes. Um, my claircognition shows up the most in ruining movie plots within the first five minutes. I agree. I mean, I've got, I can, I can name at least four or five people who can attest to that. The only one I didn't see was Sixth Sense. That one got me. So I, I'm uh, M. Night Shyamalan usually gets me. Every once in a while, I'll get, and I love it when I am because I genuinely love the the twist oh, turn oh, yeah. and I'm like oh, I didn't see that coming and I'm so excited yeah. <laughs> yeah because that's why you go if you could figure it out at the beginning what's the point of going right right so yeah the popcorn how about, how about you Jen how do you how's it come to you um it's again like everybody else it's just something that pops into my mind that I just know or like as Devin said you know you're rambling on about something and you have no idea if you're on the right track or not and then you know they're saying great that you've helped me I mean oh my gosh you know whatever and so yeah that's that's kind of how it works for me too yep okay well then let's move on to the next one Claire sentient, Claire sentient. Okay. Yes, I wore deodorant. <laughs> um, okay, so clairsentient would be as you are feeling something. Um, ladies, can you give examples of maybe how you felt clairsentient? Do you have that? I feel vibrations in crystals and stones. Okay. Um, I can I can feel and and regardless of what previous authors have said, the qualities of the stone. I, if I'm doing any type of work where I want that energy brought in. I'm always going by what I feel instead of what's written. And do you find that, and now I, I'm just going to take a little tangent on stones um, because a lot of times that you read books on stones, um, they're all different depending on the author. Yes. Um, and I'm, I, and I, that to me says, you know what, you really have to use your own intuition for what's right for you. Yes. I, you I, are yeah. working with a client and they are doing something with stones you either have to use what makes sense to you or if you get some kind of claircognition about what's going to work for for them but yeah i think uh i'm getting i'm putting less and less faith in books that say this is what it does i it, it's it's just too um i, I think it's too flexible i, yeah. I think it, it's like one of those things that it gives you what you need well, and think about it. It's all energy, right? Mm -hmm. So the energy and the quality of that energy that was perceived at the time that the book was written is what reflected off of the author's energy at that time as well. So um, like if somebody's asking me, what do you think about this stone? What do you know about this stone? The first thing it's almost, it almost goes back to that IT question. Is it plugged in? Is it turned on? The first thing I ask them is when you hold it in your hand and you close your eyes and you take a deep breath, what do you feel? Right. And like immediately they're like, oh, oh, I get it. But it's just so subtle. And we live in a society where it's just too busy hustle and bustle that we lose out on those subtle perceptions that are just telling us where to go, what to do. But that's where I believe COVID's helped us. Yes, I agree. I agree. And the other thing is, the other thing is we go into this too, is, is I don't think generally, I don't think people understand their own energy as well as they should. And that's why I always teach that in class. Mm -hmm. I know I didn't before I started classes. I had no idea that half, so much of what I was feeling was not my own. It was, it was almost breathtaking. Like it took me a couple of days to wrap my head around it. Mm -hmm. And, and I think it's great when, you know, he's had us all to check in at different times and, see how are we feeling and it, it really does force you to take a look okay is this my energy or is this somebody else's am i you know kind of merging energy which we know we aren't supposed to do <laughs> am i merging energy with somebody else you know so so yeah i think that's been one of the greatest lessons that i've learned also that's you know and that's number one in my book everyone goes how do i talk to spirit meditate what Yes, I know. I know. And that's why I want to do a segment on, you know, why meditation is so important and not roll your and not to roll your eyes at it, because 
it like there is strong power in being present in the moment and meditation helps you to get there because if you are in the moment without any um, judgments or to-do lists running through your head messages will come mm -hmm. it's the, and we've talked about this in a meeting before how to be instead of do when you stop thinking about your productivity and a to-do list and what you want to get done instead of how you want to be it's just a completely different shift in your perception mm -hmm. yeah. allison oh, wow. just put this in the chat room that it would be nice for young people to learn this and, I, and it mm -hmm. is this is where it has to start yeah. yes. young people have to learn their own energies I mean, yeah. even old people have to do it when I mean, we all do it. and that's to me what's the toughest thing and, you know I, I even when i first started reading I used to do this meditation and all this, all of this stuff to, you know, get into reading, you know, I mean, trying to ground and all. And I think that was way more ego because it was more like, oh, look, I'm a medium. I have to do this to be able to read. Now I can just go, boom, start right now because I go to my meadow and I come right back. Mm -hmm. You know, I come, from, I come from the place of peace. I come from the place of understanding. And once you're there, then the rest just comes out very simply, you know. Absolutely. I agree. I mean, that happened, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, just reading a question, there was messages there and I was just doing a general chat with people and that happened. And it, it's amazing how that happens, but you, it, you really do have to put in the work of meditation and knowing your own body and knowing what your energy is versus somebody else's energy before you can really do it effectively and help somebody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, so clear, oh, so then, do, oh, do you guys put smells in clear sentience? Well, no, it, um, it has its own, but I think it's under that category. I think I think clear sentience is the umbrella person. Okay. Well, and I was going to ask, would you do you think empathy is part of clear sentience? Yes. Yeah. Because it's such it's like, like I mean that's because the first thing that comes up when I when I think of clairsentient. Like I'm feeling things all of the time. Right. Different people. I understand what they might be feeling. I understand why they might be feeling. Um, and and just because you're not, you know, it's not a physical touch. Again, it's like that inner feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I do that a lot. Um, but even like you were saying with crystals, I mean, that's a huge thing. Or even, even though I know reading an object is psychometry, I mean, you still feel the energy and the impressions from an object if you're holding it or, um, you know, when just yeah. looking at an object too. That's a good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that was another one of the, um, the things, I mean, cause there's, so we, we covered the four main umbrella clairs, right? And then there's the different types of characteristics under that. So then there would be like a medium that would be a person who could communicate, um, could receive information from those in spirit and relay that. Um, there would be um, medical intuitive, a person who can sense what's going wrong with a person's body and give advice that way. Um, there is, and, and Jen, like you were saying, the... Um, psychometrist who could sense something from touching it um there it telepaths mm -hmm. hmm, identical twins <laughs> frequently yeah um who can communicate with one another which kind of falls into the category of i would say animal communicator as well which is a form of telepathy um which i think and, and i think a lot of these have overlapped we try to break them down into specific things so that we can label them. But I think a lot of them are all just, uh, you know, like if everything is kind of the same thing and then it's, just, it's like an amoeba, it's got little spots that stick out. Well, we label the spots that stick out so that we can kind of define it. Yeah. So um, I was just gonna yeah. say, because I, the way that I read an animal is the same way that I read a ghost. Mm -hmm. It's the same Absolutely. way that I read someone who's sitting with me. Right. It's like, it's, it's the exact same process, feeling, sensation that I would get and the same perceptions that I would be able to relay any messages from any three of those origins. Yeah. So I got the, I got the word, word clear sailings is smelling. What is it? 
Claire Salience, S A L I E N C E. Oh, okay. And then mm -hmm. Claire Gustafson, Claire Gustafson's taste. Mm -hmm. So I, I had my first taste Claire. Um, a couple weeks ago. For whatever the reason, I could taste um, McDonald's. <laughs> Sorry. I was like, well, if you're going to give me a taste, I appreciate okay. that. Thank you. <laughs> Teasing you and saying, ah, oh, Devin, this is what I'm having. It's like I'm having this too. Uh, I love eating anyway. I love that everyone thinks it's oh, listen, it's going to be so profound. And here I'm like McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that's what it's like, though. <laughs> yep. You know, that's the same thing. Everybody in the past life thinks they were a king. Nope. Uh, it was a lot of things, but that hasn't come up for me. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> nope. I'll tell you off the air. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys already know what it means. So. Uh, yes. <laughs> yep. uh, yeah. Well, another thing that I put on that list for the high schools of people who might be interested. Um, I also put paranormal investigators. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yep. that kind of stuff, because I would think that it would be interesting for students to, um, to do that as part of their club. I mean, like, wouldn't it be cool if you had high school, you know, invest, kids would be interested in the club just for that alone, you know? Yes, I, I would have. Mm -hmm. Now we have actually done presentations at libraries where they've, um, we did like a mock investigation, but it was with students. And we, uh, we, I mean, we went through as if we were really investigating and we had them ask the questions and everything else. So kids are very much interested in that and they've heard things and seen things um, in school, in class, and they don't have a place to go with this. So, I mean, that's, even here, like, like I said, in Seymour, we is one of the places that we've done it. Um, Jennings County is another one where the, the library has had us come in and work with the students there. So, um, yeah, that's really cool. That's so cool. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Um, another thing I put on that list is for people who might be interested in the club, skeptics. Yeah, yeah. you want to come and talk oh, please to please do. I, want you know I, I just get so tired of people who call themselves skeptics um they hide behind a mask of skepticism but when you take off the skeptic mask it's actually just a naysayer or a denier and i call them now um, i call them sensory deniers people that who people who deny that psychic ability can occur um I will, I will just, I'm going to put it out there because the guy's dead now. James Randy was a sensory denier. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, um, because they'll say, well, there's don't get her started. Don't get me started. <laughs> get me started on that. Anyway. Um, but no, it does get frustrating when you've got, when you're working with someone who's like, oh, I'm just a skeptic. But everything that they're saying and throwing down is like, they're just, I, I love skeptics. Just be open-minded. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this, is. I just want more information. The other one's a cynic. Cynic. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. Like, it's a thin naysayer. But, um, so Kelly says, this is really cool. We're talking about this stuff. Kelly says, my library has kits to rent out for kids and families. Paranormal investigation kits. A witch board. Oh, wonderful. Nice. Um, a K2 and flashlights and other equipment. Oh, that is okay, so, so cool. I would, I would ask, mm -hmm. um, is there, <laughs> do they also provide information on how to use it in a respectable manner and how to shut things down and how to open them up? And because, you know, we, we talked, you talked on the shows about Ouija boards and, and how, um, it's it's a divination tool, just like your K two and your you know your everything audience. else in there is all a, is divination all, tool. They're all divination. Tarot. That's but all they are. You tarot, have to, tarot. Right. I mean, right. it's all divination, folks. All yeah. the same. Right. But when you get when you buy a Ouija board as a you know a game, okay, um, 
there isn't the instructions on how to, if you are going to be communicating with spirits, how do you do it? First of all, you want to be respectful, but also to be able to open something up, but then also close it down close and it. say, we are done now. Right. You know, um, and to be, and to put stuff out without having that can be irresponsible. Yeah, Allison in the chat room says she just worries if people don't know how to cleanse and protect mm -hmm. themselves. Yep. It's, it's really, and intent, I think is the biggest yep. word. Yes. If you put your intent out there, it is. You know, what's funny is because, and I'm just going to call her out, and I don't know if she's watching today, but our group leader in Oshkosh, Dawn, they did a Ouija board session this weekend, and they had they had the one planchette take an hour, almost an hour to go all the way across the board to know. <laughs> I was like, I said, I said, so, so did you channel, did you channel a sloth? <laughs> the great, the great sloth of, of Mesopotamia has come through and into your Ouija board. And now the ghosts are like, watch this. This is going to be hilarious. <laughs> Where's it going? Uh, Hour later. Uh, no. <laughs> but, you know, as we were like talking through this, I just had a flash. Like, if we could start like um, Psychic Sea Night Youth Camps where a week. Look. Yeah. yeah, where you're going through how to work with some of these um, pieces of equipment and maybe you arrange for an investigation and give them that experience mm -hmm. um, in, a, in a controlled setting where you've got mentors and guides and it's more one-on-one -on -one than it is just here's a kid. Um, but I think, I think just having cool a kid. Though. Huh? I think that's cool though. Yeah. No, no. I was, I was about to say having the kit in the library is absolutely profound. That's an yeah. amazing start because a lot of the times I'm learning by experimentation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What happens when I do this? What happens yeah. when I do that? Well, and the fact is that it's just there. Um, yes. There, somebody might not have even considered it. And the fact that it's just there that, oh, what's this? Okay let's think about it you know just having that op that just that opportunity to even um discover it there yeah you know, and start thinking about it so hello yeah. sarah welcome we got a lot of people still joining the, the um, room tonight so that's really cool hi but, everyone you guys okay to go we'll go to we'll go to hogan's heroes good <laughs> yeah i'm okay we're good we got <laughs> green acres on right now so yeah Always here to come up next. On this is how we gauge our Psychic Tonight meetings, too, by the old yeah. time. Right. time. How show. close are we to Hogan's Heroes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the reason why we don't do these in the afternoon is because Scott likes Judge Judy. So we can't. There's like there's a window between Judge Judy and Hogan's Heroes. Well, it, it starts out at Hot Bench, and then it goes to People's Court, Judge Judy. And so that's my afternoon schedule. But, you know, that's a great example of being authentic. You own that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's part I of the show. It's on at 9 p.m. Central, 10 p.m. Yeah. Eastern, right here. See, and, you know, it used to be, it used to be that analog technology, I think analog technology is sometimes a lot easier. Like if we wanted to watch a show later, we take a tape and we put it in the VCR and we would just record it. But now, and then we went to TiVo and we had a TiVo, which was amazing, but now we don't have TiVo and some of these stations are not, um, you know, they're not something that you can pause and record they're a over stream. The air. So yeah, it's just over the air. So now, uh, I don't know, what is it now, 30 some years later, you can't even record a TV show. Yeah, but we're back to when I was a kid, when it was the same thing. You had four channels and you, and you watch your show at eight o'clock on mean, Tuesday nights with Smash or whatever, you know, it was, it was there, you had to watch it. it. Yeah, we're, we're kind of- We've gone backwards. We've gone backwards there. Like, you know, how many of you, okay. It's, it's vintage. Game. Don't get her started. Don't get me started <laughs> And how I used to listen to Casey Kazan's Tab 40 and wait oh, for stuff yeah. that I like and push record and make my cassette tape. Yeah. yeah. So easy. <laughs> Nowadays. Uh, yeah. Oh no. <laughs> now we push our cassette recording and get ghosts. Yeah. So now yeah. it's a lot That's better. But anyway, um, other psychic ability categories that you ladies can think of. I know there's some that I skipped over. Um, sorry, Jen. Jennifer, your great niece is your is um, your your uh, great aunt is here, Debbie. Oh, 
yeah. She says hi. Hi. <laughs> Yay, she's coming in from Virginia. Oh, oh neat. Yay. Yeah. So did I say hi to Sarah? I think I did. Allison, hi. And I think there's a lot of cool people on still in the chat room. So, cool. so Jenny, Bernie. Yeah. Um, sorry. Two that I come to mind are by location remote viewing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, that's right. I had remote viewers on there. Um, yeah. And by location, that's a big one. Oh, and the other one was out of body experiencers and near death experience or near death experiencers and out of body or astral travel. Or ET. Right. Yeah. yeah. But I think the whole ET thing would kind of fall into the category of mediumship because yeah. it's not just that, you know, that, so that would be channeling too. Yeah, I, mean. I was going to yeah, say, I was going to say that's, yeah. I oh, yeah, think I've channeled ET before. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, that's, that's there. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, huh? I said, what else is there? I mean, oh, what else is there? and yeah. remote viewing, psychometry. Uh, <laughs> <Berkeley, Berkeley laughs> eyes. Oh, I know. Um, I had I'm, empaths. I'm about to talk about sparkly eyes, but you can go now. <laughs> well, because you because sparkly eyes reminds me. Okay. Um, What's all right. Well, there's thing? empaths, of you. course, <laughs> which is to experience the to overlap with the energy of somebody else and thus pick up their um whatever they're healing or whatever this um, is the number rule in my results. class never mix energy but I mean, right. well and what what we do is we we i think we meet it to uh just at the edge right so that we can perceive and get information but we're not overlapping we're not mingling um that's a hard lesson for a lot of empaths myself included you know also says hi by the way jen you got lots of people oh. watching tonight Yay! Hi, guys. Okay, sparkly <laughs> eyes. Let's oh. go. go. I want to talk about sparkly. I want to finish the. Okay, uh, go finish. Okay. <laughs> okay, Don't get her started. Like you're married. Get me started. <laughs> okay, so the reason why I went okay, so there was empaths, but then I also included earth empaths. Mm. Those would be the people who are sensing the energy of the stones of the trees trees ley lines whatever that the, the mm -hmm. people that are picking up the earth energies and earth on energy. earth is that a song that's earth it angels is but it is now oh, earth energies earth, i'm not gonna even go there i'm singing <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry um but that comes yes. into the sparkly eyes which is kind of affecting earth stuff that's what made me think of it all right yeah. sparkly, yeah. Eyes. sparkly eyes so if you haven't seen Men Who Stare at Goats, go see the movie. See it it okay. by far is the, it, it seems weird and stuff, but it, it was the, it was the United States had their own psychic group and this whole movie is about it. They make it come off very silly, even with the name, but everything they did was real. And in, and in one scene there, you know, we talk about us being able to affect energy. So, you know, storms, rain that is, mm -hmm. those are energies clouds energies you know what i mean it's just a bunch of particles Jesus had sparkly eyes <laughs> yes he did so and so it was really funny we, I, I decided after that movie i'm going to try it i took a cloud i looked at it and i used my sparkly eyes on it and i dispersed the cloud Thanks. and um so we were out with, with a shaman from that i have in the area here really good friend he, um, we went over to his house and, and his girlfriend at the time was there and, and she didn't quite believe what sparkly eyes. And so we went down by the lake and we sat there and she, we said, pick a cloud and, 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 and John and I will sparkly eyes it. And we sat there and within about two or three minutes, the cloud was gone. Oh, wow. That's I mean, right. It didn't like float away. It was right it there. And it like, breaks apart. Yeah. Breaks yeah. Apart. yeah so and we, so we did, we did two of them. And then she said, do one more. We said, this is not a game, but we'll do one more. <laughs> Excuse me. Bless you. So, so she picked out a very big one. And so we said, it's going to take a couple more minutes, but we were able to sparkly eyes it away. You know, and, and I believe that at like um, the wedding I did, it was raining all the time and we sparkly eyes in the morning and to make sure the storm stayed away. And then I said, okay, because you still want to make sure the rain you know, still needs to be in specific places. So 
So you move it back at night, maybe it comes later, but you move it back, to, you know, right. get it there. But we can affect that energy because it's the same thing as we do with spirit. It's the same thing. It's energy creating and working with energy. That's all it is. But that's why we call it spark mm -hmm. yeah, We're going to put you in charge of climate change control then. All right, there you go. I'm in. <laughs> but I mean, I think right there, I wanted to just reiterate uh -huh. that. Like that's one of the biggest things that I learned is that when you, so when you do one thing, you're, you're basically, you're doing them all. Right. So like, okay, the first time that I uh, talked to spirit, I was like, oh, okay, I see what this feels like. And then all of a sudden I could talk to a ghost. And then all of a sudden I could talk to an animal because I was just doing the same thing. And I wasn't standing in my way of, of having that experience. Mm -hmm. It's the same, like, it's the same experience, same gift, just different subject. Mm -hmm. I, I already talked to Ben Hansen, so nobody can take the show, but I wanted to be the, the um, um, what was it? Ghost, um, what is it? Storm chasing ghost hunter. I like that. Where, where I could go out in the field when a storm's coming and go, change direction. <laughs> and the, thing, the thing that I have is, that's hard for me. And Ben uh, thought it was a good show. So that's cool. I told Ben he's got a producer for me. We can go do it. Nice. You know, and I just have, I, I'm skeptical. I'm just going to say, not a naysayer, but I'm, I, I, I'm trying to figure out how do you validate the weather changing things because clouds are constantly moving and constantly in flux of, you know, um, evaporation and condensation. So for me, I'm like, well, I don't have a control by which to tell whether that's actually working or not working. James Randi reincarnated. No, I'm just saying it, without a control. <laughs> it's hard to know whether that cloud was going to do that or not. Well, it's going to sit right in front of you and go away and not float away. Wait, well, so, I, you know, from a scientific- And this didn't, that's why it was right there. It stayed in the same spot. Until it move. went away. Yeah. It was in the same place in the sky and then it went away because there was, the clouds were out there. Go ahead, okay. No, I think from a scientific standpoint, Terry, you're right. It would be hard to like have a control and then a test. And But Scotty, I think the way that you prove that is instead of saying it's not a game over the course of time, we're going to have several different witnesses, 10 scientific witnesses, and we're going to continue to repeat to do this and prove that we can do this over and over and over. I mean, you can, I think, um, I, I think you you would just be willfully stubborn to deny something happening 10 times in a row within two hours you know what i mean but the guys in men's their goats did this repeatedly yeah they, they were in the u.s government and this was a part even though he, he made fun of it by calling it sparkly eyes it was something that that group did and they were able to pinpoint a lot of places through remote viewing and everything yep. so it is just a part of, of so from your scientific thing U.S. government's already done it. Yeah, and oh, already proved it. Even though the movie Men and Stare at Goats makes fun of it by calling it sparkly eyes, mm -hmm. it's still something that they did. They tried to determine if there was a fight and stuff to move storms, to move things, so the weather would be better for them. They tried. Yeah. So, and and now they say that that never happened, but that's the U.S. government. Uh, yeah, exactly. And it wouldn't be the first time in history, world history, where governmental agencies have tried to work with supernatural abilities or paranormal. <laughs> yeah, I just watched, I'm a big scary movie fan, and I just watched Overlord, which was all about World War II and, and um, working with some pretty, like, paranormal stuff. So We're pretty cool because I watch Hogan's Heroes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you start to hear a rumor so long and so often, you just, you got to know that it's not a rumor. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, so we have 12 minutes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so Allison wants to say, can you talk a little bit about Ascension? Are light workers experiencing it now? Others, as, as such mean, as Indigos, et cetera, can, any, can anyone be an experience? Uh, I really, um, I again, I'm kind You're of- frozen. Oh, no, I, I just have a little bit of a, again, a little bit of a skepticism on the whole indigo thing. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that is. 
uh, I mean, I've seen stuff on it, but I, again, I don't know what the validation behind that is. Um, how do you, how you really justify what is indigo and what is not. So on that particular thing, um, I don't include that in any psychic tonight stuff. You know, it's for light workers. Um, I, I, and again, I guess there's. You channel what, light language. Yeah, but I'm saying for light workers, that's to me, that is somebody doing something that is in alignment with their purpose. Um, so I guess the definition for light worker could be very open. So I'm not sure how that's defined. So the term light worker, as I understand it, is anyone who's using um, their energy, their intention, or their gifts to be able to bring peace, love, and light to the world. Um, so especially like in a time right now in the United States, when we're kind of going through our election, it's very anxiety filled. You can, I mean, it, you don't even have to be an empath to be able to feel it. Um, but this would be a great time to, uh, as a light worker, uh, hold your community in your, um, in your mind's eye it, with white light. And, and, and I, I, I am all about, so I know in the, I know in the community, um, I want to touch a little bit about, you know, just being aware of like spiritual whitewashing. And I, and I totally get that that's a thing. And um, I'm, I'm constantly evolving my personal practice to ensure that I'm not, um, that I'm, I'm, I'm not practicing that <clears throat> or falling trapped to that. Um, but with that, I think there is um, an opportunity to hold and send more positive intention and grounding energies to um, your local communities and the world. If there's enough of us doing this, um, then the idea is that that light work actually helps to ascend um, the people of the time. Mm -hmm. Jen, did you have anything on that? Okay. No. Um, so, so I believe ascension is always happening. I believe that's part of what we're going through now as, as a nation. Okay, but define world. what ascension is. It's, it's moving to a higher level. Okay. On next I, level. Yeah, spiritual. Moving to the next level. Okay, so again, how I need to get it for me personally to to get this, I need to know what criteria you're using to Everybody, validate what is this level okay. and what is that. Go level. ahead, Devin. Like, what's the difference between this level? So, and that? Terry, your next level is completely different than my next level. Completely different than Jen's or Scotty's or that water buffalo over there. Next level is just it's it's a ascension is. Um, is a term used to say that, so if you started at this level and there were some lessons to learn in this gap between this level and the next level, you've learned as much as you can, you're starting to go up into um, the, the next level for new uh, experiences. So a really good example would just be your simple um, elementary school. You start first grade and you've got this, you know, intention of things that you want to experience and learn concepts that you want to gather. And then as you're going through first grade and you're concreting all of this new information, the experiences, the awarenesses, the lessons, then all of a sudden it's time to graduate into second level or second grade. And again, at the beginning of second grade, you're starting all over again, but you're bringing with you what you had from first grade. And you build upon that, you build upon that. And this is just how I personally see when we talk about ascension or leveling up in our soul experiences, this is, this is how it feels to me. But yep. you, you already leveled up because you were, you were Charlie Brown's rock. Now you're Char now you don't, aren't Charlie Brown's rock anymore. Now you're a, you're a channeler. You are a cognizance, which you've always had, but now you're using it. So you leveled right. up, you know, that's right. just like, but that's also like your game analogy of the world. You think the world's a game. It is so, a game. Right. So it's leveling it's up, leveling getting up. to the next level. Okay. But let's go back to the question in there so that I can understand, am I, I using that. it in the proper context then? But, okay. but that's what I believe. And I, that's why I believe COVID came. And that's why I believe Trump came. And that's why I believe Biden's coming. I all believe this is for us to move in this level as a nation. It is time for us to become and give love and live of love and not be of, of this negative things that are out there. That's why I see it. And that's why I don't want to get into the politics, but 
but that's why I see it. It's got to be, we got to get to a place of love. And so the ascension and the next level of this world is to embrace what we've been talking about all night because the spiritual belief is the next level for most people. Okay. So the question here is, can you talk a little bit about ascension? Check. Um, are light workers experiencing it now? Um, Constantly. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's it. It's not just now. It's like, it's yeah. Always, yeah. yeah, you're always, everybody's always evolving and leveling up to the next level. We all have lessons. And once we've completed those, we go to the next one to learn even more lessons. Right. I agree. Absolutely. But Jen, now the, there's one other thing, Jen. I don't believe everybody's doing it though. And I believe certain people block it, you know, and we've run into those. Right. You know, and you know, I we can guarantee I will say the same names, you know, from some of the paranormal people we know that don't move forward. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, you're right. You are absolutely right. You know, they stay in that same because they don't want to look outside of what they know. So they're just going to keep themselves at a level where they're comfortable with. Exactly. And that's, and that's my only thing. And so I believe that the majority of us need to ascend. We all, we all should, we need to continue working that. And that's where it needs to happen, but not everybody does it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think another way of saying ascension is just striving to know ourselves better, more completely, more authentically. Um, when something bothers you, taking the time out enough to understand where inside of me is that pulling from? Why did that bother me? Um, you know, those are, those are the small steps that make really big improvements in our relationships with ourselves because the better relationship we have with ourselves, the better relationship we can have with the world. Um, the other thing that I was going to point out is what you might be talking about when you're asking about ascension right now. I do think since COVID hit, especially in the United States and the worldwide, it all started to ramp up. There has been this global collective of halt, like to a point where it's whiplash and it's forced us. And Scotty, you, you touched on this briefly earlier. This stop in the world has absolutely forced us to have to take a look at some of the parts of ourselves that were really hurting. So it was no longer uh, a society where we could bury ourselves into our daily work, come home, cook dinner. Um, we, we, had to, we had more time and space and it was more aware of some of the things that had come up that we had to deal with. Um, so I do think that there was a lot of time um, and there still is uh, where we're doing some individual healing, we're doing better communications, we're having more experiences with our guides um, and that's where I was going to go. It's spiritually, it is because, you know, everyone goes, why, why are more people feeling spirit now? It's well, because they're slowed down. They're not running and cooking dinner and then going out to the sporting event and then coming home and watching TV and then going to bed and not hearing. When we're home all the time, spirit comes and talks with us just like they always do. But now because it's quieter and we're not doing as much, we hear it. Yes. And that's a part of the leveling up. That's a part of the ascension that's happening. Oh, and more people are feeling this. And that's why it's starting to me. It's exciting because everybody should have this in their life. Okay. I, okay. I had, uh, I just got something. <laughs> don't know if it's accurate or not. I'm going to put it out there. Um, Stop. We don't say just put it out there. I'm just going to put it out there. Um, the thought just came to me is could it be possible that the reason why we're having to deal with so much so quickly right now, now obviously it's because we have a lot more people and therefore there's a lot more going on. So that's one of the factors. But could it be that the potential existential crisis that is coming because of our increased population and thus um, damaging effects on the planet, which again, could wipe us out potentially or dramatically reduce us could that be forcing us to hit these levels sooner because we won't have much of a chance much longer is that a possibility i you know there i think that's part of it i think more um what umbrella is that is that we're being called to do better as a race as a nation as a world um, what we are headed toward, it's almost like, um, if you come from corporate, it's almost like an action plan. 
all right, this is where you're at. This is where we need you to be. So here's some things that are going to happen to help you get to where you need to be to keep going and working with us, us being some stuff that I'm not sure we want to get into tonight. So. You know, and, and Nate puts it too, you know, it's neat to see because Oregon just made psychedelics not, mm -hmm. not a problem. I was going to share that link with you, Terry. Yeah, they just legalize, mm -hmm. um, I can't pronounce it, psycho, psycho what? What? Psychedelic? Psychedelics? No, the, the specific name, a psilocybin oh, or psilocybin. psilocybin yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can't pronounce it. Hey. As, as, hey. It should be, as it should be because it's a natural occurring thing. It's a it's a it's a plant. And I just believe that it's completely immoral for any individual organization or government to make plants illegal, to make life forms illegal. How can you make life illegal? Right. And you know, it's ridiculous. Think, well, you know, it's just if, um, um if if Life We're is at two hours. Oh, so yay! Because don't get her started. Don't get me started. We're gonna I can't right. believe it's already been two hours. Oh, God. I know it went so quick. I'll have to have you guys back. I already got the banner. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. I would love to. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, um, how can you make a life form illegal? Um, if if it is sinful or bad to possess a life form um somebody should have told god that no well, and you know and <laughs> i agree with you hot, tell god because he's the one growing it yeah well and and that like I, I, again i don't know if we want to get into all of this but that gets very blown out very quickly because then you're talking about Ill Ill illegal immigrants mm -hmm. and yeah. life forms are humans as well People who are throughout history titled illegal or wrong, uh, persecution, um, and it, it's something that I can get very hot about very quick. So um, it's you just, started. yeah, and it, it, don't get me started. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I um, should do a show called Don't Get Me Started. Don't get us started. Get us started. <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm out, so I'm not coming in. Yeah, it's a couple of weeks. Scotty's like, I'm not doing it. You guys are on your own. You're on your own. I, I, I'll, I'll moderate, and I'll go. Mm. And then I'll come back. Okay, next topic. Show be five hours long. Right. <laughs> but the whole idea of making something illegal and even knowledge, this whole colonizer mindset. I have it, you want it, so because I don't give it to you, I have power. And it's just yeah. another, it's another area in humanity where we can do better. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree, agree. All right, I love okay. you guys. Why don't we start with, with Jen? Why don't you give us your web pages and where people can find you and, and everything? Um, you can find me on Facebook on Jen Hodgson, Psychic Medium. Um, you can find me at jenhodgensypsychicmedium.com, which is my website. Um, you can also find me on hodgsonbooks.com and professionalparanormalinvestigations.com um, and on Instagram with those same names. So, yeah. Cool. All right. Devin, yep. go ahead. Yeah, uh, so you can find me at um, devinevans.com. I'm also on Facebook at Devin Evans Psychic Medium uh, and Instagram, um, uh, Devin E., uh, or divine medium, Devin E. Medium. Um, or you can find me out in the astral realm, just chilling out with my guides. <laughs> right. Or with, my, or with my guide. And go ahead, where can we find you, Scotty? At um, scottyrourke.com, Scotty Rourke um, on Facebook. Um, Scotty Rourke Psychic Medium is my business site where you can get um, anything that says Scotty Rourke or Spooky Scotty. It's me. There's 60 pages on Google. I looked it up the other day. I know. Awesome. That's too many. <laughs> Never enough, Scotty. You got to get them all. No. And then, right. and then let's get into the Psychics Unite one. Each town has their own. So on Facebook, we have groups called Psychics Unite. And then we have the state with the two letters and then the city name. So that's how you find them. So if you look up like a Wisconsin, you go Psychics Unite WI and then do the search and it'll show you all the ones in that state. Mm -hmm. So Devin's is what? Um, OH. Columbus. Yeah, we've got uh, we've got one for OH Columbus, Dayton, Cincinnati, and Cleveland. And Jen's is Southeast Indiana, I N. 
Uh And then ours is WI Madison. So we got them all over the place. And we got Psychic Tonight Organization. There's a bunch out there. So come find us. Um, Like we said, Devin posts every week um, where where our Zoom meetings are for Monday nights. It's always the same link. So feel free to come in. Join us every Monday night, 6.30 p.m. Central on Zoom. And soon we have YouTube videos up to on the YouTube channel, and that is Psychics Unite as well. So be sure to subscribe. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Don't forget to click the little bell for the notification so you don't miss out on any videos. And also remember that Scotty's che- Scotty is on every Wednesday night, and he always has some, has some awesome guests. That's and it. don't forget, Devin's show is on Thursday. Yeah. Next yep. week, I, next week I actually have another chapter member. So Sandy, we were talking about Sandy coming on next Wednesday night with me to talk about mediumship and and their mm-hmm. group up in Portage and West Western Wisconsin. So awesome. just north of the Madison area. So. Sweet. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much. Very nice to see everybody. Thank you at home for watching and those that are watching on Facebook the rest of the week. And then on, like I said, Jen's also going to put this on, on our, on our, on our YouTube channel so we can get it there. Yep. So and if you want to find me, you can find me on Scotty Rorick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Say bye, everybody. We got to go. We got to go. Goodbye, everybody. Get out of here. Get out of here. Go, 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 go. Good, good. See ya. Ah, 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 ah. Good night. Ah.